Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to be responding to yet another question that was on my blog that I responded to there, and I'm just going to basically make a quick little YouTube video regarding that as well. And I do think that I have figured out at least a temporary solution to my digital camera making me sound like I have a lisp when I'm making a video, so hopefully this will sound a little better even though uh, I've made about 50 videos <laughs> before figuring it out. The question um, is, what role did one-on-one -on -one therapy play, if any, when you were in active recovery, after you had the tools you needed and were utilizing them, and rarely using behaviors, but still not yet recovered? Um, this was a really interesting question, I thought, because it's asking, obviously, about my personal experience, but more than that, it's asking about how it helped me after I already had the tools and had started using them, which I think is pretty cool. Um, in any case, I was in therapy with the same professional for several years. I started out hating it, grew to tolerate it, and eventually to even be eager for it. While I was away at college in a different state, I still had phone sessions with her each week. I also saw a therapist on campus at the university's counseling center, which is something that I cannot recommend highly enough. And while I realize and recognize that a lot of um, on-campus counseling centers leave much to be desired, it's a resource, it's free, and it is part of tuition, so I would utilize that if you don't have any other options at your fingertips. And some of the counseling centers are actually really quite good. <clears throat> um, I also did group therapy. Sometimes I was therapied out, but for the most part I think I was collecting basically as many forms of therapy as I could in order to help pull myself out of my hole. But back to the question at hand, um, as I progressed to a place where I had the tools, used them and rarely used behaviors, but was still not recovered, one-on-one uh, -on -one therapy was a way for me to know that I had an outlet. Once I was doing fairly well, I didn't have therapy sessions once a week or even twice a week. I spaced them out to once per month and sometimes with even longer spans in between. I knew that if I was having a rough time with something, a situation, a person, a behavior, etc., whatever it might be, that I had an appointment in the future, however far away. And it allowed me to breathe and find the balance between living completely independent of any help and being dependent on help. And I was able to live on my own and take care of myself, but knew that if I needed some help, it was there. One thing um, I learned from therapy that I'll always take with me is this story, and I call it my claim to shame, and I've posted it on my blog, obviously. So I'm basically uh, going to read it to you because it's something that I've already written out and if I'm not looking you directly in the eyes, it's because I'm reading off of a screen. <laughs> Shame. It's a word that trembles with negative feeling. It's a word that has a lot of power. It's a word that I used to associate with my eating disorder. I felt shame when I restricted, when I counted calories, when I fit into tiny clothes, when I threw away food that I couldn't bring myself to eat, when I worried my friends and family. But most of all, I felt shame when I cried. When I cried, I felt so weak and so helpless and so out of control that I was absolutely disgusted with myself. I couldn't fathom being someone as stupid as I was. I couldn't understand how a girl with a brain could hurt her entire family and all her dear friends by continuing on a path of self-destruction. It wasn't rational. It was shameful, at least in the eyes of a girl struggling with anorexia. My shame when I cried overpowered me. I took to crying in private, waiting until doors were locked in my dorm room, apartment, bathroom were empty, and I was the sole occupant. I cried in the shower. I cried in bed at night, in the dark, silently, when my roommate was but feet away in her own bed. But sometimes, when my life and my emotions and my pain became too much, I cried in front of someone. And that was when the shame flooded my face with heat and made me wish I were dead. If I cried in front of a friend, I would instantly apologize over and over again. I would shake my head and cover my face as though to say, don't look at me. If I cried in front of my parents, it was worse still. I had to walk, no, run, away. The shame was just too great. Once I cried in front of my eating disorder therapy group. All eyes were on me. I was explaining something or telling some weekly tale and out came the tears in a torrential cascade. I was mortified and the therapists and participants alike were stunned because they'd never seen me cry before. I couldn't speak for the rest of the group session. I was so overcome with shame. Shame had in me a fierce and unyielding grasp. 
I'll never forget the time I cried in front of my former therapist. I had been going to her for about two years. One particular day, she was prodding me about something that was a tender point. I was getting angry. I was getting upset. I was getting overwrought. I was becoming a mess. I let go. I cried. I bawled. I couldn't stop, and I couldn't speak for a moment or two. I played my old game of covering my tear sodden face with my hands and apologizing. When I looked at my therapist again, she was smiling. No, grinning. I was dumbstruck, but I'll never forget what she said to me. I can finally see you, the real you. I questioned her with my disbelieving eyes, and she said, Finally, you are giving me something. You're not closing off or hiding it in. You're crying. Sometimes you need to cry. It had a real effect on me. I've since transformed her words to mean, Sometimes you need to cry in order to get better. I've learned that being ashamed of something real serves no purpose and will only keep you from gaining ground. I've also learned that by crying, you can get out some of the bad that's inside and make room for the good. I apply this whole concept and attitude to my eating disorder in general. So much shame enveloped me that I couldn't get past what was going on inside me. I had to come to terms with the shameful behaviors and feelings in order to move forward. Shame is a dirty word. An anagram for shame is, has me, and have me it did. I think of that when I feel shame about something. I don't want to be had by anything. I want to turn it around. If eating disorder equals shame, then it stands to reason that if you get rid of the shame, you are that much closer to getting rid of the eating disorder. It certainly was an important step for me.